here it is. The news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. Two years ago, I took a break from TV news, and it changed my life. Prior to that time, I've always been a good father, but I rarely got the chance to be a good dad. It gave me a chance to think about the things that not only matter to me, but to everybody. It also gave me a better perspective on news. I spent a number of years in Cleveland and Cincinnati, and it's given me an opportunity to see every corner of the state. I want to empower our communities and redefine what a news channel can be. Every morning, the people of Ohio have the opportunity to wake up and start fresh. We want to be a different kind of news channel, putting storytelling and community first. Well, tell us humbling to be invited to our neighbors' homes and help them plan their day. Welcome to your morning news. I'm Sophia Constantine. Take a look at your weather on the one. We've got a large band of precipitation. Your morning news. We stay morning. on Spectrum News 1. Monday morning, take an in-depth look at your community. <coughs> in Focus with Mike Kallmeyer, a half-hour show dedicated to the important issues. Driven to bring decision makers together and committed to elevating discussion and debate. Your community, your state, your show. In Focus with Mike Kallmeyer, Sunday morning at 10.30 on Spectrum News 1. Exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president, maybe I won't, but I will tell you that I'm not going to go away. And I don't think Michigan can become the Michigan of old. We're probably the first professional sports team in the world that was built by the fans. We're the biggest ice cream shipper in the nation, setting the standard for American ice cream. I get to live my dream. I mean, what, what could I ask for? Conversation 
Sunday and Tuesday night at 9 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. Northeast Ohio, I'm meteorologist Ashley Babin. It is an absolutely gorgeous afternoon out there. Your evening looking very pleasant as well, with only minimal rain chances in the forecast for us through the rest of the evening. Maybe a quick little spot shower is going to be possible, but by and large, we're dry and really comfortable this evening with those temperatures after sunset falling off pretty quickly, particularly away from the lake shore. We're pretty rapidly after sunset. We're going to see temperatures coming back down into the 60s. For areas right along the lake, it's not going to cool off quite that quickly, but we're still in for a very pleasant evening. Let me walk you through it. Readings in the mid-70s by 7 o'clock this evening. From there, temperatures falling off a little bit more sharply after 9 o'clock, and then we'll ultimately wind up with overnight lows in the 60s right along the lake, likely seeing some upper 50s as we get a little bit farther south away from that Lake Erie influence. Minimal rain chances through Wednesday, then a little bit of a spike here coming our way on Thursday as we reintroduce some of those late-day showers and likely a few thunderstorms into our forecast as well. About a 40% chance there, about another 30% on Friday. So seeing more of those late-day summertime pop-ups. Additionally, we're going to be bringing back the heat. Already by Wednesday, we're back up near 90. And for the weekend, we're going to be seeing temperatures right around there as well. Both Saturday and Sunday, I'm expecting a daytime high of 91. But heads up with a surge in humidity coming our way later this week. Those low 90s are actually going to feel more like mid to upper 90s during the afternoon. On Lake Erie, water temperatures in the 70s. Light winds today out of the northeast, 5 to 10 knots and 1 to 2 foot waves. Checking out that seven-day forecast, dry again tomorrow. Temperatures very nice, right around 80. But then we'll see that big spike in our temperatures coming our way Wednesday. A little dip there Thursday and Friday, but that's only due to increased rain chances during the afternoon. We're back in the 90s for the weekend. Overnight lows will be warming up significantly as well, only dropping into the 70s for the second half of the week. People have filled the streets, some marching peacefully, others violently to protest police brutality. But in Cincinnati, one group is taking another approach. As our Camry Nelson shows us, they're returning to music to honor one of the victims who was killed by police. <laughs> the sound flowing through Washington Park for the Cincinnati violin vigil for Elijah McLean on Sunday evening. Dozens of violinists from across the city came together to celebrate McLean's life. The 23-year-old violinist was killed by police last August in Colorado while walking home from a convenience store. He had committed a crime. It's really nice when, you know, people from all over the city come together uh, for something that's important. 19-year-old Madeline Dineker says an event like this was so important to her because she had the opportunity to express her support for McLean through music. The protests are really amazing and it's great seeing people come together and I feel like this is just another level, adding music as, you know, the universal, universal language for so many of us is a really powerful thing. This vigil is not only important to the artists who perform, but to the supporters as well. I was in a war that day. I have a grandchild that lives in that city, and there's no reason why Elijah had to be treated the way he was. With her sign in hand, Neil Wellier showed her support to a young man who she says didn't deserve to die. It's no crime to be a nerd, you know. It's no crime just to be an innocent person. And um, when I learned that there's going to be a vigil here tonight, I was determined to come. Through this visual, Royal Yang says she hopes to see real change happen for those who died from police brutality. I'm hoping that justice is taught, that the officers are either resigned or been fired. Now they need to be prosecuted and convicted. But the most of all needs to be changed in the way officers interact with the public. This vigil was one of more than a dozen others to take place across the country to honor McLean's life. For Spectrum News, Henry Nelson. Exactly. Well, to fair 
poverty as we take a look at the trends which have plagued African Americans for generations and how experts are trying to tighten the gap. But first, we continue to hear from activists, leaders, and community members about what brought them to action and how addressing racial discrimination is so important to create a better world for everyone. Here's today's Voices for Change. I believe that Cleveland is unique in the fact that we do have a very large number of uh, up-and-coming black leaders, but we don't necessarily do the best job of plugging them into the opportunities that they need to get to the next level, to uh, take over the helm, if you will, of uh, political, business, uh, civic, and community leadership opportunities. I've learned in my travels as an African-American male, not everyone wants to walk in my shoes, and uh, rather they, they want to point fingers or make assumptions. And of course, assumptions about black men is uh, one of the biggest problems that we're having in America right now. Uh, it's why there's always this quick transition to violence and aggression when uh, uh, men of color are stopped for a routine traffic stop. So we, we just have to change the way we think about black men and the way we communicate to black people and people of color in general. And if we can do that, I really believe we'll be much, much further uh, down the road in a much better country. You start to understand things like what Jim Crow meant and how Jim Crow laws kept my grandparents from being their uh, full selves and reaching their full capability. How redlining, uh, to a great extent, limited the opportunities of where my family could live and, and work and do business, open a business, uh, etc. How limited education opportunities in urban core settings because of disinvestment or underinvestment affects the uh, impact of uh, one's ability to not just graduate from high school, but successfully matriculate at uh, an institution of higher learning. If companies are serious about addressing what's happened in America, I think they really need to begin to establish report cards, some type of accountability to be able to look back a year from now to say, we were here when we made that or offered that statement, and a year later we can certainly point to progress because X number of individuals have been promoted, X number of individuals have been hired, X number of individuals have uh, been invested in in one way or another. It can't just be words, it has to be actions and deeds. Everyone is here for the experience. 